so when, when you go to Bumad and start uh, seeing articles and viewing reveals, you, you start thinking that the, and you get to the conclusion that the, do, the dose makes the poison. <laughs> and this is something that we are seeing that zinc can have biological effect, can, but zinc can do, can do good and zinc can do harm. And this is what we are figuring out. So zinc is a, a micro, micronutrient. We've seen that you have the cell, when you have the homeostasis of the cell, you have zinc as an important factor as cell division, as a DNA, protein function, uh, catalytic activity in enzymes, as a, as a, but zinc can do harm and as a toxin, it can cause like the people that are miners and that are, that are welders, that they breathe, that they deal with metals and they are workers and they breathe this, they inhale this zinc, they can have toxicological effects and these guys, they can have like fever, they can have uh, myalgia, fatigue, and they can have to stop working to get back better health. But zinc can also have a therapeutic drug and can do good. And in this way, has been evidence related to the common cold. There's a cocaine uh, evidence that shows that zinc in the first 24 hours of administered, you can have uh, uh, decreasing symptoms of the common cold. You have uh, as a treatment for diarrhea in children. And uh, there is a, a estimate that relates to almost 1 billion people around the world are zinc deficient. So when you think about that, so it, it's lots of things to think as you do. Zinc doing good. And macular degeneration. So you have macular degeneration and uh, you have, uh, it's a disease that uh, predominantly in the elderly, older people, as you get old, you have oxidative stress. And these older people, they have the macula, is a part of the retina, it's a part of the eye that uh, receives the, the, the light. And these people, when they get old, thanks to oxidative stress, they have a degeneration of the macula. And about the this uh, macular degeneration, there has been uh, 10 years ago, from NIH, a big clinical trial showing that, and trying to figure out what are the difference between tri treatments for this disease. So you have early stage of macular degeneration and you have advanced stage of macular degeneration. What this study tried to do was to give, for people that has macular degeneration, uh, antioxidants, one group was placebo, another antioxidants. These are antioxidants are basically vitamins, vitamin A, C, and E. A group with zinc alone, and a group with antioxidants, these vitamins plus zinc. And what they found out within the results is that the only significant uh, decrease was in the last group, antioxidants plus zinc. So, if you have macular degeneration, the prevention for the the development of it, not the prevention of the disease itself, but to the to the advanced stage of the disease, antioxidant plus zinc has an effect. And as we are interested in zinc, we try start to figure out if we could measure how much zinc gets into the eye. So how much zinc gets into the eye? So that was the question that we proposed to how much of this zinc that these patients are taking gets to the eye. So here we have uh, an over-the-counter drug. So you can buy this in CVS, Walgreens. You don't have to have a prescription. And you have these tablets. So this is a supplement of these vitamins and, uh, and zinc. So we get this supplement. You can see one, there, there's zinc. You can pass around. So you can buy this. And we bought this. We pulverized this tablet. And we sent to MIT. So the zinc that is here, we know to activate the zinc there at MIT. So what we had is the zinc 64 that we have here. We know to activate it to zinc 65. This is a gamma meter. So we have a specific uh, energy of this gamma emission. We have a half life that is long enough that make us possible to 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 do the experiments. So we we sent this tab as pulverized to MIT. The neutron uh, neutron neutron activated it to zinc 65, and we. We get them back. And then we dose the animals with the occupy, that is what patients receive. And then we dose the rats, so the experience took three weeks, so twice a week we dose the animals. And then after the last week, after four days of the, of the last week, we sacrifice the animals. And this, we, we administer by gavage. So what it means is that the, the patient usually takes orally, the bio, oral. 
the, 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 the drug. And what we gave is by Gavage. What means is that we have a needle, and then we put the, 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 the ovibite inside the stomach. So we can direct the, oh, we know that the, the dose that we're given in terms of ocuvite, in terms of zinc, that has this radioactive activity after uh, neutral activation, we are dosing the animals. And after that, we measured the tissue. So after sacrifice, we measured the tissue. So we have here 22 tissues, and among the tissues, the eyes, that it, to make the relation with the, the, the clinical trial. And then, uh, just to give an idea on, on order, this makes like more than uh, 500 samples because you, 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 there are lots of, you have six rats, 22 for each rat, and you have feet, and you have urine, so you have to weigh all these, all these tubes with the contents, you have to measure in the gamma counter all these, so it's like a pharmacokinetic study, it was really nice to, to learn how much data you get from these kind of studies. And here is an alphabetical order of the, of the tissue we've taken with this, uh, our main interest that was in the eye and else. So here is, we also analyzed the fees in urine, so we did that by using metabolic case, the place where you put that rat and you have water and food. And then you can have in separate tubes the fees in the urine, and you can measure. So we, after dosing, the animals, we measure, put the animals in metabolic case and collect fees in urine, and separate them and measure in the gamma counter to see how much it was excreted. So about the distribution, what we found was that uh, you have, as a percentage of those, so after all the dose, 0.01% of the total dose is in the eye. And uh, consider the other tissues, you have 6.62. Uh, but the point is that in terms of this percentage, and this is the, uh, what is in, uh, fees in urine, and part of fees is, is now absorbed. Uh, when you just divide the, the dough, the, the amount of zinc by the weight dough, what's the relative concentration? If you normalize, but I can imagine it in a liver, a bigger weight. Yeah. Perfect. So what we have is in terms of, uh, so as a percentage of the dough, because this is the important question. No, no, every time I have a, I think I have a good idea. <laughs> and what that already had. It's very common. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, next, next slide. <laughs> <laughs> next slide. <laughs> so that's the 0.01% of the dose. What it means, because the eye is really a tiny uh, part, a tiny organ, so what mean, it means? So if we, we make the zinc, as a concentration of zinc per gram of the tissue, we have the, the average for the entire body, and this point of uh, uh, five, six. And uh, what we have is that some tissues, they concentrate more than others. So as the bone and the skeletal muscle, and you have the eye over here, that it's less than the average of the body. It doesn't concentrate as the bone and the skeletal muscle, but seems to concentrate in relation to the plasma, in terms of the three times so, right? And uh, these are the, the data that are collected until you now, but uh, the, the next experiment that we're thinking about is if we take this eye and we separate the parts of the eye, because you have the you have the back the back segment of the eye, you have the anterior part of the eye, you have the lens. The lens in the retina is really big. So how if you separate them? How, how is going to be the concentration within? So this is we, we met an ophthalmologist from Brazil. They're in uh, Eye and Ear Institute. He's helping us with this idea of separate them and, and see if this m makes difference in terms of concentration in the retina, because the oxidative stress and the macular degeneration is within the, re the retina. And then. Uh, <coughs> Uh, another idea is about uh, ocuvite uh, adding uh, zinc to, so I give the, the zinc that is, in, this is giving through this supplement, add zinc to the zinc that is already there in the eye. So we have usually uh, zinc in the eye, and there is additional zinc that we take from the supplement. So how much comes from the supplement, how much comes from the, from the that's already there? Do you have storage of these eyes? No. We have the eyes, we can, then we could Yeah, because it. one suggestion would be to, to do laser micro dissection for the different microdocuments and measure in the, in the micro dissector, in the microscope, we have a microscope that can, can dissect the retina and then doing the analysis, instead of anatomically dissecting. 
you put under the microscope both the laser by set and then measuring different compartments. Perhaps we will recognize that it's much more, uh, let's say, diffusive. So we cannot expect zinc in the lens. Yes, exactly. Maybe this, this could be a solution for it. Look, so, how, how much zinc is in the uh, rat's regular diet? And are you giving them a uh, period of their diet when they don't have zinc? So the, the zinc you in the diet that we give is the, is the zinc that is already in the labs, that is where we, 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 we uh, the, the common diet. And this is the equivalent to the human intake. So it is like, for the human intake is like 10 milligrams per day. So this is equivalent to the rat. So that, that's what's in the diet? In the diet, the current diet of these rats, the diet of these rats, current, right now. Uh, you, 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 I think this is a very nice study. And you learn that the, the amount of tissue, the target tissue, is so small. Mm -hmm. that, and you notice in the entire... What was even interesting... Even if you consider the, the height as a compartment of reference. I think you should go to, to laser micro... You, you do have a laser micro, micro, micro section here. So, this could be a... This could be a... Uh, and there is any model of uh, macro degeneration rats? in mice? In mice, okay. but there, there is uh, uh, this the, the, this model that because macro degeneration is a big disease, and you have the the early stage and the advanced stage. This and there is a model in for mice. the advanced that it, it makes about angiogenesis that are related okay. to angiogenesis. So angiogenesis, you, this model about the angiogenesis, okay. Is okay. But this clinical study is not about angiogenesis. It's the early stage, and for this we we, we don't we don't have this model. Maybe there is, but we haven't found it. Perhaps UV? Exposing it's for UV light. This is a really nice presentation. Fascinating results. There is yeah. some slides, but please. Okay, no, I was going to ask. Lutein is also in there. Is that anyway. Sorry, lutein? Lutein. Uh, yeah, there is, so there is a, this is, this, this clinical trial that, I, that was there, it was in uh, 2001. There is one current that happened and will be released next year, or uh, that it, uh, it's about lutein and uh, another uh, shunting that is uh, something else. So, but we, we specifically uh, okay. target the zinc. Yeah. But this is a compound. Okay. So, and if we wanted to trace like the vitamins, all the other vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin C, you know, we could do that, but you had to use carbon-14, it would make mm. things um, more difficult. could be done, but it makes things more difficult. And uh, just to, to think so, the, uh, some ambitious questions that mm -hmm. are related to this is something more locally in the eye, is something for the entire body that acts systemically, these effects of zinc, is the, uh, and the zinc that uh, is more so this uh, the zinc that we are giving we are giving to the to the, to the patients to the animals is there a, a, a risk a toxicological risk in this and uh, this effect of uh, of ocuvite of uh, the supplements is to you have you know that we know that the elderly they are usually zinc deficient so with over age you are, people get uh, zinc deficient so with this effect. By correcting the zinc deficient deficiency, or is this effect by uh, creating above normal zinc in the plasma and in the body? And uh, uh, we we met uh, uh, two two weeks ago in a conference uh, uh, another uh, researcher that that she researched about cadmium, and there maybe there is a correlation with cadmium uh, competing in uh, there is a uh, in changing the uptake of zinc in the eye, so maybe there's another cause of macular degeneration. So is that something, something, something more to think of possibilities? And here, this is uh, the last hour uh, slide, so if we could uh, uh, work together in what you mentioned to the pregnant rats and uh, the, the, the placenta and everything, if you could, because we, we, with this model, we can readily act, activate their things in my team, bring it back and try to do and we have neutron activation there. We have a facility to do neutron activation. Uh, there, it's very, it's very efficient. So I think we should.
would say Bolivia. We, we, we say, I would suggest that we can do uh, diets different. So we make animals efficient in zinc or, 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 or both normal yeah. zinc and see if there is a population effect. It would be a very nice. That's something Lucas is, again, it addresses John's question of what's in the normal diet. And we might see quite different results if we had seen deficient mice. Yes. So that would be relatively easy to do. And if you want us to do, it would be, you know, if you send us some caps, uh, Lucas could look at, again, we could be trying to activate those okay. and really see where the zinc goes. Okay. Like where, where is, uh, is it unusual, again, for his data, zinc was the highest uh, of the metals that you looked at. What do we see here, or what do we see in other cities? Is that typical to see zinc number one, or is it usually something else? Um, no, zinc isn't generally that, uh, that high in, in air pollution measurements here. It's a, it really is a pretty small fraction. However, when you go to specific sources, like when we were doing studies at the uh, uh, coal plants, we found that uh, even with fairly low primary particles, we had at times high zinc, and actually high zinc correlated with the increased neutrophils in, uh, in the lung. So that uh, zinc, in, uh, uh, as a potential toxin, can have some interesting uh, effects. Uh, thank you, Lucas. We need to uh, move along, and uh, we got...